Welcome and good morning. Welcome everyone. Before we begin today's commencement exercises, would you all please rise for the playing of our national anthem? Madrigal singers, would you please join your choir? Gentlemen, please remove your caps. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets ran with the bombs bursting in air, gave proof to the Well, good morning once again. My name is Kevin Burr, and I have the pleasure of being the principal at Woodland Park High School. Dr. Neal, Board of Education members, students, faculty, staff, parents, and the friends at home watching on the live stream, welcome everyone to today's celebration. And it's a celebration of what has been, of course, but much more importantly, it's a celebration of what is yet to come. I see before me on this field at Panther Stadium more than 100 outstanding young people that are poised and prepared to do whatever it is that they set their mind on and dedicate themselves to accomplishing. I'm confident in them. I'm confident in their readiness. I know that they are amazing young men and women because they've left so much of themselves and their imprint on our school. The resiliency and academic tenacity that they've shown over the last four years is nothing short of amazing. Today, these seniors are joined in celebration by just a few of the men and women who helped guide them along their journey. Several Woodland Park School District teachers and faculty who have worked hard with these young people throughout their time here are with us today. Would you please help me in recognizing the excellence of these teachers and staff members in the most noble profession in the world? Today, though, is about the students that you see here in front of me, and our hearts are full to see them here together one last time to see them here prepared and ready for what life has in store. We know they're prepared because we pushed them hard, sometimes harder than they wanted us to. At each obstacle, at each new goal, they rose to meet the challenges that were set before them. And in just about an hour, they are going to achieve that lofty status of graduate. See, it's been the goal for them for the last 13 years. It's been out there someplace on the horizon, sometimes visible, sometimes invisible. For many of our seniors, today was a foregone conclusion. For others, the trials and tribulations along their personal pathways would have brought many of us to our knees in resignation. And for the, those of you that have overcome things that only you know, we salute you and your personal resilience, your dedication and your commitment to make this happen for yourself in spite of your barriers. 
If you look up the word graduation in Webster's Dictionary, you'll see that it refers to the awarding of a degree or a diploma. And of course, it's a synonym for commencement. Neither word, commencement or graduation, references terms like completion or finish or end. In fact, it's quite the opposite. In these ceremonies over a long career, I've always challenged those sitting in front of me and those in the audience to think of this as a reference to a beginning, this new chapter in their lives. Now, whether or not you choose to go to a college or a university or to the military or to a technical college or straight to your career, it matters not. If your successes from this point on can be guaranteed if you remember that you have it within you. You have it within you to do whatever you want to do. You have it within you to ignore the easy excuses that others are going to be ready to offer. You have it within you to overcome your challenges and you have it within you to achieve beyond your circumstances and your current dreams. Now, since we haven't quite finished yet with you for a few more minutes, I'd like to offer one or two challenges. And since I know you, you're up to them. I challenge you to make a difference in your world. Make a difference in creating a world that you can be proud to leave your children. And I challenge you to use your talents and not let them be wasted. I challenge you to think for yourselves. I challenge you to do more for your fellow man because we know you are made of more. I challenge you to do more for your fellow man than he does for you because I know you are made of more. Go ahead, set the example for others to follow and be the person your mother thinks you are. I challenge you to mean something to others. Don't settle for mediocrity. I challenge you to love more deeply, be slow to anger, be quick with compassion, and I challenge you to make peace on earth a reality. To the families out there, thank we thank you for trusting us with your children, and we thank you for the investment that you've made in making them the incredible people that we know they are. We thank you for the incredible sacrifices you've made to help these fine young men and women to this point, this new beginning. Now let's just enjoy the rest of the day. It's my pleasure to introduce WPHS Assistant Principal Cindy, Cindy Gannon. Good morning. As Mr. Burr said, I am Cindy Gannon. I'm an assistant principal here at Woodland Park High School. I have the honor of introducing our guests this morning. Next to the stage with us today, we have our choir director, Mr. Jeff Hemmingson. <laughs> Alongside of our graduates, we have our uh, advisory teachers, senior advisory teachers. We have our honored staff to my right, Mr. Jordan Post, Mr. Chris Becker, Miss Michelle Eastman, Miss Kelly Schmidt, and our guest speaker, Mr. David Graff. <laughs> our members of the Board of Education, also to my right, Miss Sue Patterson, Mr. Chris Austin, Mr. David Illingworth, and Mr. David Ruster Holtz. To my right again, we have Superintendent Dr. Matthew Neal, Principal Kevin Burr, Assistant Principal Ms. Karen Hamlow, and Panther Academy Administrator Mr. Tom Torrance. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to recognize our high school district and central office staff in attendance this morning. Thank you all so much for being here. And now if the Madrigals would come up and join your choir for your song.
It is now my privilege to welcome to the stage our superintendent, Dr. Neal. For those of you that did not see that, Derek got a whisper from the back um, administrative row and said, Derek, wait just a minute. And he froze like ice, like he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Thank you for the introduction. Board of Education, members of the Woodland Park community, staff, and most importantly, graduating class of 2022, welcome to this ceremony today. Yes, please give them a hand. 
I'm honored to speak a few words of encouragement to each of you as you cross this bridge today from student to graduate. While of course you've had many milestones in your life, today will be one of those milestones that will be ever etched in your memory. You know, with the advent of these little devices, we have a tendency to take a whole lot of photos, sometimes 30, 40, 50 at a time. But I would encourage you right now to think about this moment in your mind. Think about the grass that you has under you, underneath your feet, the smell of a springtime air in the mountains. I can take your phone away, but I can't take this memory away. And I would hope you would take this moment in and pause and think about what today is about. You know, I was recently contacted by the graduating class of 1972, who will be doing their graduation or their uh, revisiting to our campus this year after 50 years. They will come back here and they will tour these halls and they will walk these fields and they will pause and remember. They will remember the fun and the adventures. And they will remember that one great teacher that set them on the path to their life's journey. They will think about their day just like this day for you, much like you will look back in the year 2072. And they will wonder in awe at all the days gone past in those 50 years from that day until this. And you know, as they look back, I would imagine a few thoughts would come to their minds. So let me share with you what I've seen so many times when graduates return to their home school. Most of our returning graduates think about the good and not the bad. May I encourage you to do so? It is human nature that we do this. We think about the greatness of our past. Your memories will be about the friends, the parents, the teachers and relatives that are here with you physically today and those in spirit. This is good to remember today this way. The second thing that I believe that they'll remember is that great one or the goat as some people call it in sports or other fields. Many returning graduates remember the greatest teacher in their world. That one who never let you slide, that held you accountable and simply was there for you. You know, I hear our students all across our school, school district say they absolutely have a teacher, a counselor, administrator, a staff person that they trust and who sticks up for them. This is part of the greatness of being a Woodland Park High School graduate. Remember the great one in your life that helped you get here today. And finally, the thing that you'll hear them say so often over the years that I've visited with folks coming back to their graduation or their uh, high school, they all have challenge that we live with. You'll never know the story of your fellow classmate. Thank you. You'll never know the story of your fellow classmate sitting next to you. As Mr. Burr said, the challenges, the hurdles, the struggles, the opportunity and the stick to itness of your fellow classmates. That person next to you has so much to give the world. Encourage them, stand up for them. And when you look back in 2072, I hope and I pray that you remember today as that amazing milestone in your memories of life. All the best to you in the years ahead and may you be blessed as you leave this great team of teachers, staff, students, and leaders and head into your next amazing chap chapter. God bless. All right. Good morning, class of 2022. <laughs> My name is Morgan Berry, and I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker this year. I hope you all remember him for wearing the same shoes our entire four years of our high school career. He always wanted to have his dogs out in his Birkenstocks. Mr. David Graff. All right, class of 2022, what up, huh? We standing on the stoop, but we trying to reach that rooftop. Am I right? Let's get there. What a beautiful day to graduate, man. What a beautiful day. The reminder of the recent spring snow still upon the, the peak there. I'd rather the panorama center of the uh, be of Pikes Peak than graduate at the Pikes Peak Center. This is much better. 
Quick point of pride. I informally uh, did some research. Um, there's gonna be over 17 million high schoolers graduating this year. You get to graduate in one of the highest stadiums in the country. There's Leadville, there's Cripple Creek, there's Fair Play. Uh, there's Summit High School. Uh, there's Winter Park, all in Colorado. There's like three in Wyoming, but who really cares? And then I think there's one in Idaho, again, who really cares? So if you do the math and you put things into perspective nationally, you all get to graduate at the top of your class. <laughs> class of 22, yes! This makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, allowing me to hang with you for a little bit today. Your freshman year, I was tasked with trying to teach you American history. Now you have to understand, each year is a part of our evaluation. Teachers have to choose a data point to compare student growth from the beginning of the year to the end. If I may, after your freshman year, my measure of student growth was the lowest score I'd ever received in my teaching career. Both you and I had room to grow. I was surprised when the new schedule came out for your sophomore year, and guess who has two thumbs up and had to follow you guys up to world history? This guy. Um, uh, thank you a lot, Admin, for that, by the way. Now, the pandemic brought a lot of difficulty, but there was one great positive for me your sophomore year. The state of Colorado decided not to count our evaluations and pushed it on to the next year. Thank you, COVID. So it does make sense, after all. I'm certainly not the best teacher in this high school. And you're certainly not the best class to ever walk through those halls. <laughs> <laughs> you had to earn this. You really had to earn this. This was not easy. Nope, not in the least. And that's why I love you, class of 22. That's why I think you're more deserving of this graduation than any previous class. Hurdles, ground swells, fires, pandemics. Not yet. <laughs> and yet, here you are. What a testament to perseverance not necessarily intellect, but perseverance. I know us all too well, but what a testament to grit and gumption and in the end, a real display of determination. How awesome, class of 22, right? How awesome. Thank you for letting me be your speaker today. I appreciate it. Okay, this is for me. I wanna take you back, way back, back into time. Picture a world before streaming services, a world full of wonder. A world before Woodland Park had a Walmart. A world where neon colors and horrible graphics were widely acceptable. A world where boy bands and pop stars started as singers and then got a TV show, not vice versa. A world where Blockbuster was the best place to be on a Friday night. Yes, you're there now, the 1990s. Why the 90s? The twilight of the golden age of hip hop, of course. Everyone has, everyone has a go-to album. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. An album that takes you back and reminds you of something important, something essential, regardless of space and time. Mine happens to be an underground rap al album. The artist's name is Scarab, and the album's name is Heavenbound. The first time I heard it, I was driving around this town in my friend's Subaru Legacy, and it hit me hard, like life-changing hard. I didn't know you could put poetry into motion like that. I'm from Florissant, Colorado, for heaven's sake. I wanna focus on a piece of a song I was listening to while trying to write this address. It's from a song called Wishful Thinking. This is for you, wifey and Harper. The chorus goes as such. I used to know this girl as fly as Saturdays and what a beautiful Saturday it is. And every time she would smile my way, it was like honey to me. I would hold my heart as well as my hopes back in fear of how she would have reacted if I was to express how I was attracted to her. And every time I would see her ever so beautiful figure walking this earth, it would just confuse me, leaving me woozy. But I kept my mouth shut. I figured putting myself in such a position of vulnerability would just give her the power to either use me or abuse me. So in the back I stood, skylarking. I would ponder on what if, but the what ifs would have been solved if I wasn't so chicken to get involved in these matters of the heart but that's all in the past and she's gone, leaving me asking, I wonder if I'll ever have another chance 
I wonder if I'll ever have another dance at changing my circumstance to romance from wishful thinking. It's beautiful, right? I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, at least for someone as sappy as me, and I'm gonna try not to cry here. It is not uncommon to catch me sobbing at a commercial, any commercial, involving a father and his kids. Curse you, Dove Men Care. Curse you. Back to the lyrics. So much to unpack. It's true, right? Youthful innocence, the inability to seize an opportunity given to you by whomever, it doesn't matter. These life motifs are all appropriate for the moment today. I mean, after this ceremony, there's a strong chance you get to see maybe 15% of these people again, maybe. And there's nothing wrong with that. The fact you got to be here today together is enough. But I bring up the song not for these romantic ideas, but for the word within the lyrics. I realized there was a word that made little sense to me. I didn't know it. Skylarking. Skylarking. It must have something to do with the bird, right? Perhaps it's song? Well, that may be part of the definition, though nobody knows exactly where the word originated. Um, by the way, have you ever listened to a Skylark song? I did for this speech, and you should as well. It's like attending nature's best EDM concert. But that's another story. Skylarking is a sailing term originating sometime in the late 18th, early 19th century for when seamen would scamper through the rigging of the ship in a playful fashion. Nowadays, it is essentially a word to describe shenanigans, tomfoolery, you know, horseplay. As Kurt Vonnegut put it, it's an intolerable lack of seriousness. Once I understood the meaning of skylarking, it hit me. This is the perfect word to describe the class of 2022. <laughs> it's apropos, isn't it? You, a class that came to the high school with a reputation of skylarking, that had, depend on, had to depend on skylarking for your own survival. To, you had to depend on skylarking to maintain sa sanity in one of the hardest times in recent history. You embody this more than any class before you, and that's not a bad thing. Maneuver, adjust, skylark. Now is not the time to be Atlas. You do not have to take the world on your shoulders. You have neither the wealth nor the power nor the influence. Skylarking, skylarking is perfect for your age. Maintain your youthful exuberance as long as you can. Even Billy Madison understood it. Stay here as long as you can. Go skydiving, ride a bull, hit the Nar Pow, jump into the ocean. It doesn't matter which ocean. Um, the, the Gulf's getting a little sketchy these days, so maybe stay away from there. Fall in love, fall out of love, whatever. Skylark, if this world isn't beautiful, what is? Explore it in your youth for real, like now, go, before you get bogged down in politics and stock prices and who the next host of Jeopardy is gonna be. I stood skylarking, pondering on the what if. You're the what if. Answer that question sooner rather than later. This is for my mom and pops. <laughs> Thanks. I was taught at a pretty young age that it's better to see a sermon than hear one any day. Think about that, let that sink in. It is better to see a sermon than hear one any day. My hope is that you shall all have seen enough sermons from your family and your teachers, your mentors, that you feel somewhat ready to take on the unforeseeable. More importantly, I hope you've witnessed those sermons from your peers. And most importantly, I hope you have seen those sermons in yourself in your everyday life. We don't always choose what's best for us and best for others, but my hope is that for you and each major accomplishment in your life, upon reflection, you can say that your rights have outweighed your wrongs, that you've loved more than you hated, that you'd helped others after helping yourself, that you gave when someone was in need, that you cared when no one else would, and I trust this will be the case for you because believe it or not, I've seen it in you guys. I've witnessed it. And this is for you, class of 2022. Kaylee, thanks for coming to say hi every day, even though sometimes I didn't want to hear it. I can be awful. Ren and Jenna, thanks for always making me smile and giving me faith that I'm not the most awkward person in the world. Mason, just thank your mother. Samara, thank you for making me laugh. Eli, thank you for taking my class twice for no apparent reason. Ash, thanks for your bravery. Miranda, thanks for your strength. Juan, thanks for your kindness. 
Kayla, thanks for your spirit. Savannah, it doesn't matter which one, you're awesome. Sebastian, Tony, Alex, thanks for becoming Arsenal fans. Carly, thanks for leaving your softball bag in my room for three years. I gave it away. Gabe, thanks for making me feel like I'm actually smart enough to teach smart kids. Sai, you can light a kid up, man. Take that to note. Foot <laughs> Football guys, reference halftime locker room uh, talk from your freshman year at Eagle Valley. You don't have to grow all the way up. You just have to grow up this much. Wyatt, thank, for, thank you for showing me that you can always jump higher. Shaylee, thanks for always being on time. Aiden, Mina, Ryan, and all the cross country kids, thanks for not making fun of me. Brady, what you accomplished was truly amazing, truly inspirational. Andrew, go catch yourself something awesome. You deserve it. Chase, I didn't recognize you with that hair. Crystal, thanks for reminding me that kindness matters. Dean, you taught me that a two sentence conversation does matter. Sierra, go Rockies. Jalen, I thought you were dead weight in your book and then on the most important night, you were there helping us finish it until midnight. Zariah, I know what you had to battle through in Joy College. Brooklyn in the house, Faith, your art will always remain in my room. Jack, what the heck, man? Master Splinter, I hear you. James, thank you for pointing out one of the 300 plus mistakes in the yearbook. After all, you don't have a twin. Piper, thanks for holding me accountable. Keegan, Grace, Tyler, Morgan, Emma, thanks for giving me faith in humanity. Well, at least a little bit. And last but not least, Uma, just simply Uma, all right? Hey, class of 22, it's time to go do some skylarking. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graff. At this time, those staff parents who had previously arranged to hand their student diploma should now make their way to the fence line to meet up with Ms. Vichek. A new tradition began last year. In 2017, the RE2 Woodland Park School District Board of Education made a policy change regarding recognition of distinction related to the top performing students in a graduating class. The board adopted the Latin honor system with honor rankings based on three tiers, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude. The Board of Education's expectation was to have a senior speaker selected through a process developed at the high school. Therefore, Woodland Park High School created a task force of graduates from the class of 2020 to design the selection process for graduation speakers beginning with the class of 2021. The student created policy established that the top honor students would submit short statements to the group on why they should be considered to speak at graduation. Of the statements submitted, the top five would be chosen to submit a speech for consideration to the administration. The administration would then choose the two who best represented that class. We followed this protocol, and now I have the great privilege of introducing two amazing homegrown Woodland Park students to share their thoughts with you. The first speaker, Anthony LaGreco, is a young man you rarely saw walking our halls, but he has been with the class of 2022 from the beginning. He attended the cottage school at Gateway Elementary and the homeschool in Richmond Academy during his middle school years. He has been excelling academically with a 3.91 GPA with our high school blended learning program for the last four years. Anthony lives by the words, stay strong, stay positive, and never give up. These words have served him well. During his school years, he loved the opportunity to perform plays for his classmates and guests during cottage school and taking American Sign Language in high school. He appreciates all of the amazing teachers he has had at Woodland Park throughout the years and plans to pursue a career as an elementary school teacher. Our second speaker, Derek Eckhart, is a young man we constantly saw walking the halls as he was pretty much involved in every activity imaginable. Derek has been with WPSD since third grade and was active in baseball, wrestling, golf, beta club, National Honor Society, student council, knowledge pool, and key club. Outside of school, he was involved in his local youth group and Boy Scouts. With all these activities and the time he spent outside of class, that 4.18 GPA is certainly amazing, Derek. After high school, Derek will be going out of faith-based gap year to Guatemala, South Africa, Cambodia, and Thailand. After his world travels, he plans to attend Montana State University to pursue a degree in pre-med. He lives by the words from the book of Isaiah, do not, so do not fear, for I am with you. 
Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Woodland Park, I present to you two incredible young men that will surely influence our world for the better, Anthony and Derek. After, after hearing all those other speeches, my speech much more looks like it pales in comparison. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Hamlow, for the introduction. I would just like to say that um, this is an honor for me to be able to give this speech. And um, I decided to look to um, the past graduation speeches and speakers from our past year, few years. Um, I thought of Admiral William McRaven's Make Your Bed speech. It's very inspiring, and if you haven't heard it, it's available on YouTube, along with all the other um, speeches I'm going to mention. It has 30 million views, and you should definitely add to that count. And I also thought back to um, uh, Matthew McConaughey's speech to the University of Houston. It's, it's much more casual and uh, not as nerve-wracking as I feel right now. Um, it doesn't have as many, as many views, only 6 million, but still, you should give it a watch. But if there's any speech I should mention, it's Rick Grigsby's speech that is known as Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout. It's by far one of my favorite speeches that I've ever heard. And the world, uh, the world agrees. It has over 100 million views worldwide over multiple websites. Well... My speech won't be about making your bed. It also won't include any lessons from dropouts, as you can tell. And I think we can all agree, I'm nothing like Matthew McConaughey. But I'm going to give it my absolute best here today. Some say life is like a mountain. Now, living in the park, I think when we think of a mountain, we can, we can only think of Pike's Peak. It's right there after all, we, we, pass it, we pass it every day, we come here. But when we think of climbing a mountain, what mountain do you think comes to mind? Can you imagine climbing Mount Everest? We've all heard stories about people who have climbed or have wanted to climb to the top of Mount Everest, the peak of the earth itself, or what some refer to as the top of the world. The training climbers go through, the passion they have for climbing, and the burning feeling they possess that drives them to the point where they must conquer the tallest mountain in the world seems almost incomprehensible. But when you stop and think about it, isn't some of the challenges of climbing and motivations for climbing Mount Everest or any mountain a lot like the journeys we experience in our lives in general? For the past several years, even beyond high school, we've all been going through the same journey. We've traversed similar paths it's at similar but varying paces. We've experienced challenges together and have had similar goals in large part, like making it to this very moment on this very day. And we've certainly a lot of had a, we, we've certainly had a lot of help during the course of our journey, haven't we? We can look around us right now in the stadium, in, in those seats right there, and in, in even the chairs around us right now. We can see the people who have been our cheerleaders, our advisors, our counselors, who have helped us chart our course and stay on path. <laughs> who have helped us chart our path and stay on course. Parents, family members, teachers, mentors, coaches, friends, as well as other significant individuals in our lives. We owe a massive thanks to these people who have been there with us to help celebrate our successes and have also been there to help lift us up when we are at our lowest point. So, I, I'm speaking for everyone. Thank you. I cannot say enough how grateful for, we are for your help and all of you contributed in helping us make it to this day. We are here today to mark an important accomplishment. We've successfully completed all the requirements to complete high school and graduate. It is a time to celebrate, 
Not to be nervous, unlike me. <laughs> but we finally reached that peak, that mountain peak, that at so many times in our lives seemed like we just couldn't make it up there. Like we were stuck in a storm blizzard, but we couldn't get out of it. But we're here, and that's incredible. Tomorrow, however, however, we will embark on a new journey. We are called upon to climb new mountains and new direct and to choose new paths and new directions, along with a brand new set of challenges that go along with our new goals. When we leave here today, each of us will be deciding which mountain we choose to climb, as well as how to approach that climb. No matter our choices, no matter which direction we choose, remember that regardless of, a di of the difficulties we may encounter along the way, keep moving. Because with each milestone we conquer, each milestone we obtain, and each summit we reach will be worth it. And when we do reach the top, the peak of that mountain that we've been climbing for what seems like forever, it will be so rewarding to look out and realize how far we've climbed. But life isn't about climbing to the top of a mountain, just to, just to say, oh, I climbed to the top of a mountain. <laughs> climbing the mountains in our lives is about creating goals for ourselves, accepting the challenges, overcoming the obstacles. Over, <sighs> moving forward, redirecting when necessary, but making progress. Find your passion, enjoy your climb, accept the challenges, keep moving forward. And every now and then, <laughs> take a step back, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, and enjoy and appreciate the view that comes with every milestone we achieve. Love and appreciate the little things that bring you joy in your life. And with determination and perseverance, we can achieve our dreams. Life is what you make of it, so do not go wasting it. And to borrow a quote from Barry Finley, who climbed Africa's highest mountain at age 60, every mountaintop is within reach if you just keep climbing. Congratulations, Woodland Park High School Class of 2022. I hope you keep climbing. Thank you. I need one second. <laughs> Can you just hold this for a second? <laughs> Oh man, sorry, a little bit of a rocky start, but it'll get better. You look great. Thank you. Woo! All right. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, teachers, administrators, friends, family, and fellow graduates. It's my honor to be on this stage in front of you all today. For those who still don't know me, my name's Derek. I was the loud kid you heard from down the hall. And I may not know each and every one of you personally, but we've always walked the same hallways, taken the same dumb tests. And anyways, today's an exciting day. Today, all of our hard work pays off and we finally reached the finish line. Our high school years had real struggles, including COVID, teen drivers, acne, Yet despite all the odds, we still all managed to graduate. So give yourselves a round of applause. It seems like not long ago that we were wearing the Walmart Paw Patrol or dinosaur backpacks and running around on playgrounds. For some of us, that was back in elementary school. We can hardly remember it. But for others like me, that was just the first semester of senior year. There were good, there were bad, there was everything in between, but we endured. 
we had tough skin and pushed through. I mean, we had to when we were watching our Woodland Park sports teams. Anyways, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not to mention the pandemic that we had. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> um, I know everyone's tired of hearing about it, but it was truly part of our experience. It helps teach us per perseverance and helped us to learn different ways to tackle everyday life. And thank goodness for our phones that help us to stay connected, even if our parents think we're addicted to them. Anyways, the moral of the story is we made it through together. We never gave up, or at least we didn't give up for long, and today we graduate. We didn't do it alone, however. Oh boy. We had wonderful teachers to support us along the way. From Mr. Post rapping to whatever Mr. Brown does on the announcements every day, none of what we would have accomplished would have been possible without this incredible Woodland Park High School staff. So I'm truly grateful to the administrator, administration, teachers, and faculty who helped us achieve all that we have and all that we will go on to accomplish. Holy cow. <laughs> Next, thank you to friends and family who helped us every step of the way. From the math homework that you guys couldn't really help us with, to helping us pick out an outfit for the first day of high school, thank you to all the family who helped us. And next, thank you to all the homies who came together to make so many memories. The basement talks and nights we spent in the woods are moments I'll never forget. From playing ping pong to working on projects together to just going down to the springs just for Dutch, it was all worth it. As for me, I'm proud to be a Panther. I'm proud of this community that rallies for sporting events and comes to life on Friday nights. I'm proud, of our, I'm proud of our small but mighty marching band. I'm proud of the Peach Fuzz team that absolutely destroyed the juniors last week. Yeah. I'm proud of everyone who decks themselves out in hot pink and loses their voices with me at basketball games. I'm proud of this small mountain community that rallies around our school and makes us feel at home all over town. As cliche as it is, I'll always, re Whoa. I'll always remember Woodland Park as the 18 years I've had here have been unforgettable to say the least. This town has brought us incredible memories and shared experiences. I mean, as a class, we spent hundreds of hours up on Rampart, hundreds of hours at the top of the world, countless hours doing absolutely nothing at McDonald's or Sonic. We went to prom in the gym, we've hung out, we've fought, we've done all sorts of things that we'll never forget. Ponder these things as you cross the stage, not with sadness, but with joy because it happened. We're even more blessed that our small town is in such an incredible location. If you look behind me, what's known as America's Mountain is back there, behind the trees, I promise it's there. A mountain that inspires people. A mountain that inspired the writing of America the Beautiful. Pikes Peak is a mountain that's looked up to, but a mountain that isn't even the tallest in Colorado. So even though we're from a small school or a small town, or we aren't at the top per se, we can still rise to the top, still make a name for ourselves, and still make a difference. Like Catherine Lee Bates wrote in America the Beautiful at the top of Pikes Peak, America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Fellow graduates, we are this brotherhood, the brotherhood of the class of 2022. And now we all go out in different directions from sea to shining sea. Now's the time when we leave each other to go out in the world. I challenge each one of you to continue to represent our school throughout your lives. And I'm sure there's people sitting here today who will make a true difference in the world and go on to do incredible things. Each person sitting here today is more capable of doing this, is more than capable of doing this, and I encourage you all to do so. I encourage each and every one of you to reach for the stars and achieve your dreams, but not forget to look around and help others along the way. Reach for the stars, Panthers. We've made it this far, and we have so much farther to go. It's time to split up, gang. Derek, you handled that well. When he's involved in so many things in school, he has to wear a lot of swag at graduation. So, well, now's the time you've all been waiting for. But before we get started handing diplomas, I'd like to take a moment for a special recognition for three of our seniors. Now, as a build, building principal, we value many things within a student body. And at the top of the list, we really look to student leaders who can help us carry the culture of a building, a culture of care for one another, a culture of acceptance, a culture of commitment, a culture of respect, a culture of drive and determination, and a culture of excellence. For many years, I have taken the liberty that comes with this position to select 
the outstanding seniors to be recognized with the principal's leadership award. Now, there is no specific criteria for this award. I don't have a committee that makes this decision other than what I just mentioned a minute ago. It's my choice. Any of our incredible student council or National Honor Society or Beta Club or Eagle Scouts or host of other members of this class could have easily been selected to receive it, and they would have been deserving. Nevertheless, the seniors that I want to recognize today are three of our most noteworthy leaders, and they have been, they, and they have been for four years. Now, they are influencers. They are the example setters for how to treat his or her fellow classmates or anyone at our school. They set a standard for who our Panthers really are. They are great students, incredibly caring people, and quite simply, remarkable in every way. I wanna thank them for, th for that example, and I wanna thank them for their cheerful smiles and their genuine enthusiasm for being a Woodland Park Panther. Their kindness to fellow students, their recognition of effort from teachers, their dedication to the Panther ethos, and simply for being the kind of Panthers we want all of our students to aspire to be. The following three students, please come forward and be recognized by your class and those friends and relatives around us. Sarah Sampson. Nick Conlon. Aiden Johnston. Aiden. get a picture all right you guys can bite go back to your seat we do have an award for them we've had some supply chain issues and they'll get their award later all right now we're ready ladies and gentlemen dr neal members of the board of education and district administrative leaders it is my distinct pleasure to inform you all officially that these students here on the field with us today have met the requirements as set forth for graduation by woodland park re2 school district I present to you the class of 2022 with the first row. Please rise and make your way to the stage. Check. Brianna McKenzie K. Adair. Juan Misael H. Cott Castro. Kenneth Franklin Armstead. Kayla May Ballard. Madison Christine Barnes. Kara McKenzie Behan. Morgan Tyler Berry. William Andrew Black, summa cum laude. Colin William Branco. Baden Cole Breitenstein. Jenna Sean Lee Brink. Yeah, 
Savannah Nicolette Brockus. Sebastian Alex Augusto Cadillo Torres. Carly Ray Lynn Carrillo. Jeremy Tate Cephas, summa cum laude. Rodrigo Spanchiato de Menezes Chad. Lauren Grace Chisholm, magna cum laude. Nicholas Russell Conlin. <laughs> Bailey Kim Cornforth. Tristan Lincoln Crandall, cum laude. Charles Patrick Davis. Adam Harold Delarm. Cy Daniel Dellinger. Yeah. Emma Noel Doby, cum laude. Elise Virginia Drummond, summa cum laude. Derek Owen Eckhart, summa cum laude. Michaela Rose Ingle. Noah Sadler Faircloth. Wyatt Timothy Fay. Wyatt Holden Fernand. Gabriel Aiden Frank, summa cum laude. Zachary Cole Freider. Christy Nicole Foreman, summa cum laude. Wyatt Wayne Fusen. Adam Gabriel Garner.
Elijah Daniel Garner. Justice Raiden Garza. Claire Gilginas. Esperanza Yasmin Gibson. Sammy Ellen Good. Gavin Michael Goss. Kaylin Vivian Halliburton Zamora. Brady Cade Hankin. Andrew Cole Harper. John Th Thomas Hatton the third. Sierra Jordan Hildner. Zariah Cheyenne Hinton, cum laude. Nicole McLean Jackson. Kaylee Shea Jensen. Aiden James Johnston. Caden Hunter Kenyon. Levi William Kettler, cum laude. Ryan David Kint. Summa cum laude. <laughs> Crystal Rose King. Dean Edward Kazelka. <laughs> Anthony Jack LaGreco, magna cum laude.
Ethan Paul Lanza. Mina May Lassiter, magna cum laude. Tanner Edward Lucas. Jake Spencer Martin. Chase Andrew Mason. Zoe Carmela McClard. Grace Elizabeth McClintock, cum laude. Twyla Jody McIntosh. Serenity Nicole Miller. Haley Lane Moore. Yulisa Andrea Molter. Brecken Taylor Moore. Isaac Fumero Murin. Jesse Aaron Nass. Jalen Brooke Nielsen. Samara Rain Olin. Kaya Lee Olson. Deja Chevelle Polk. Holly Eve Price. Mason Keith Piles.
Samuel Michael Raymond. Casey Quinn Refka. Dustin Joseph Guy Rodriguez. Savannah Marie Roshek, summa cum laude. Carenza Rachel Russell Weddington. Sarah Jen Sampson. Shaley Marie Schindler. Miranda Kate Schrotland. Elise Abby Siegel, summa cum laude. Maya Lily Short. Faith Hallie Smirkanich. Keegan Michael Smith, magna cum laude. Conrad Harris Solinsky. Piper Isabella Solinsky. Jesse Fong On Splinter. Kaylee Diane Stela. <laughs> Trinity Michelle Raymond Terry. Tyler Scott Time, magna cum laude. Jamie Michelle Thomas. Enrique Antonio Torres Chavez. Patrick Thomas Vitagliano Jr. Alex John Vonderhaar. Alex. 
Jaden Ray Weidler. Isabel Marie White. Have, there we go. One of the traditions that seniors have here at Woodland Park is they give their principal something as they're walking out across the stage. And, and this means a lot to me because it, the thought that they put into it. And today they gave me Scooby snacks because they know that I brought my therapy dog to school with me for two years before we had to put her down this year. So thanks for remembering Lucy. Mr. Eckert, would you please come forward? Class of 22, would you please stand? All right, uh, folks, the graduates will be leaving. They'll go d straight down to the gym where they actually get their diplomas, and you can meet them out on Panther Way. If you want to make your way to the parade route, we will start the parade at approximately 1145. One, two, one, two, three, and...